Hello, happy campers. Welcome once again to yet another episode of Geeking Out. Actually, a very special episode. Chris, you know what's so special about this episode? I, I, I believe it involves a five and a zero. Probably enough, we've done 50 of these things. This 50. is number 50. Now, we, we, don't, we don't do just one a week. We'll, we'll do a batch of these and just throw them up whenever. And the word throw up is pretty appropriate. But... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, today is a very special episode because I want to talk about something that has been talked about a whole lot. Get your input into it, see what you think. But this actually came down roughly about a month ago. Uh, Google announced, and this got a few headlines, but not a whole lot. And yes, I'm wearing new glasses if you can see me over here on the market. Uh, yeah, it's finally short. Style and profound. <laughs> uh, uh, Google announced quantum supremacy last month, guys. Uh, those of you who don't know what this means, you have computers and then you have quantum computers, which are two entirely different things, sort of, kind of. Uh, traditional computers are binary, okay? Basically, they check a circuit and see if there's electricity going through it. Uh, I always tell people that a binary computer works this way. It looks at a lamp, okay? And if the lamp is on, it gives you it tells you it's on. It's positive, it gives you a 1. It gives you a positive result. If the lamp's off, it gives you a negative result, that's a 0. So it's either a 1 or a 0. That's the by in the binary computers. And that's a, and one lamp is equal to one bit. So if you've got eight bit computer, it can look at eight lamps at a time and tell you which ones are on, which ones are off. So 16 bit is 16 lamps, 32 bit is 32 lamps. So on, so on. I think we're up to 256 or 512 bit for the retail market now. Uh, that's where the standard encryption is now. It's 256 lamps. So, so to do that all at once is impressive. But you run into problems with that because of just the physical limitations of it. You can only fit, squeeze so many lamps in to a, a, a particular physical space. What quantum computers does is it doesn't use bits as we know it. It uses what are called qubits. And a qubit is different from a binary bit in that a, a qubit, a quantum bit, what a computer uses, it can tell you whether the lamp is on or off. But it can also tell you does the lamp have a shade on it. What color is the shade? It's like binary combined. Yeah. It, the whole thing about quantum computing and quantum physics all together is relationships. It's This is essentially God's operating system. This is how God coded everything, if you want to go that route. His operating system is quantum physics. Uh, so, like I said, a qubit can tell you whether the lamp is on or off, whether it has a lamp shade, what color is the lamp shade, does it have a base, what shade, color is the base, does the shade go with the base, where were they each manufactured, are they in style right now, what will be in style next week? Is that lamp over there on? If that's on, does this one go on or off? Does and so on, so and it can tell you all of that at once. Okay, and it's all still one bit, just like before. You could only tell whether the lamp is on or off. Now it can give you all caboodles of information, infinitely more powerful. So essentially, what this means is that when Google declared quantum supremacy there was a standard test that they were running all the quantum computers through and you just see both of them, their eyes glazed over because I'm talking tech stuff now instead of geek stuff. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> just to make it fast, the idea was to take this really, really, really hard, tough, super duper difficult math problem that would take a traditional computer about 10,000 years to work through. A, com a quantum computer that could work on it and beat a, a binary computer to that result reliably would be considered supreme to that binary computer. So they threw all the binary computers they had at it and they had it down to a benchmark on how fast they could, this, they could get this problem done. 10,000 years was the rough estimate on completely breaking this problem. and. Google's quantum computer did it in 200 seconds. So three and a half minutes did a 10,000 year problem. 
the reason that's important, and again, I won't try to make this quick because we've got other things, a lot of other things to talk about, other episodes to record. What this means is that a single computer now has enough processing power to not just identify every atom in your body, but it can catalog it, alphabetize it, sort it, compare it to what's supposed to be normal, and if something's wrong, fix it. So, we use the, uh, the old example of uh, the Star Trek tricorder, the one that Dr. McCoy used to use. He would wave it up and down and tell you what's wrong with you. And he'd look, wave it up and down and say, sorry, right, right now a doctor will come in and say, all the tests show you have cancer. We need to actually go in with the scalpel. We're going to have, have to see if we can find these cancer cells because they have to come out. We can't leave can't, a single cancer cell in or it'll just grow more cancer. With quantum computing, you'll be able to take a tricorder essentially and scan somebody and say, you have cancer, hold on a minute, adjust some settings on it. You may have to actually sit down on a diagnostic bed or something first, like they do, again, in sick bay and Star Trek. But the idea is eventually <coughs> they can get to the point they'll be actually able to reset your body cells to, way to normal. So if you have a cancer, they just reprogram the cancer cells back to normal. They send in some little nanobots in there, do the construction on it, roll it back. You're getting wrinkles, stuff like that. All we have to do is just set your skin cells back about 30 years. You'll have tight skin again. Your brain's getting a little foggy. We just roll your brain cells back about 30 years. Just It actually de-ages you, and then it's just a matter of maintenance after that. So if anything goes wrong, they can actually sit there, fix it, and come back. And that's just one application. I mean, we're talking about if faster than light possible is, or faster than light travel is possible, it'll be figured out through this. Well, see, a quantum computer, mm -hmm. it can control anything that contains an atom. It's mm -hmm. not just, like a regular computer just uses processors. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And anything with an atom, a right. quantum computer. This, this is the goal of quantum computing. Yeah. And, and there was an old episode of WKRP. I told you guys this joke earlier where they were having a contest and Dr. Johnny Fever's on there and he's giving the, the prize, you don't have to die. This, in about 15 to 20 years, technology is going to get to the point of quantum computing. You may not have to die. This could be the game changer that, I mean, there are certain things you can look out through, throughout human life. You can tell humanity's destiny is going this way, and then suddenly, boom, it turns off to the right or veers to the left. It goes off in a different direction. This is when that quantum supremacy occurred last month. That's what this is. This is going to go down in history as a landmark if this is what we think it is. Of course, being futurists, we're amateur futurists because we're geeks. But yeah, but I mean, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a cool fact that things that we've seen in like movies, TV, comic books, where you know things can be fixed so easily, is a really cool idea. I just hope there is not some moron. It, it, in the government field somewhere that says, well, if we do this, you know, we won't have to go get medicine. We don't have to go and get checkups, you know, stuff like that, because then the medical field won't make that much money because of this. Well, if this comes to pass, the world's going to end anyway. Um, <laughs> what, what about the population problem? There's nobody, I mean, I'm sure somebody's thought of that. I mean, if, if nobody's dying, you that's, know, well, that's one of the Everybody things. Everybody gets back in, yeah. and they're having babies again. I mean, mm -hmm. it's... That's one of those things ethicists have to figure out. I mean, okay, let's say if it comes down to a matter... And we're focusing on health care, but this is going to affect a lot more than it, but we're going to focus on health care right now for... Because it's probably... Because we can important. get this done in about 10 minutes, maybe. It's anyway. about me. So <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things, and that's one of those things, you, Scott, like you pointed out, that's something that's going to have to be figured out. If everybody, if we cure death, quote, end quote, if we can cure death, why would we have children? Why have children? 
Mm. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> and that's just one of the one of a lot of things we have to figure out. And like you were pointing out, if uh, if this comes to pass, then will government spend money on health care? But if this comes to pass, do governments need to spend money on health care? Well, I mean, yeah, but the thing is, is like that. Like a lot of people don't know, but there is fruit that is supposed to help cure cancer, but they outlawed it because people don't go, or like uh, uh, cell research, uh, stem mm -hmm. cell research. Mm -hmm. You know that can that is frowned upon because people don't go to the doctor and stuff like that. What but this mean? stuff will stem fix the problem. Deal with just dead babies like that. is the. Mm. That, that that's the major hang up with stem cells. Okay. And and that's that's the other thing too with with quantum computing. Let's bring it back to what we were the original goal here. Yeah. With quantum computing, we can learn how to make a we can make a stem cell from scratch. Yeah, oh absolutely. Because this is going to be so powerful and this will be one of those two hundred second problems. It'll look at it and be like, Okay, here's your answer. Mm -hmm. This is how you would do it. Right. And then and then walk you through it. <sighs> Now, we were talking about youths and uh, children. What would this do? There's one more thing it leads us up to, and that's AI, artificial intelligences. Something that can think faster than us. And as far as quantum's concerned, it's all about relational relationships. This thing will be able to think circles around everybody. Maybe not us collectively, but can we all get on the same page long enough to outwit one of these things? How do you control that? This is something that actually Isaac Asimov covered this idea 56 years. Yeah. Actually, it was about 70 years ago with the three laws of robotics. How do you control an artificial intelligence? And he advocated establishing standards and then spent the next 40 years writing stories where it didn't work. <laughs> so, yep. just one of them things to think about and, and something for you to think about. That's why I'm throwing it out there for our, our special 50th anniversary because, like I said, this is game changer and this is one of those things that you need to be keeping an eye on because I don't get them all right, I'll admit. I've, seen, I've been wrong before, but honestly, looking at this, this is one of those things you should be watching in the future because it's been about 20 years people are going to look back at 2019 as the year everything changed and as usual we don't see it coming so and and yeah. the thing is that i mean science has always been really really important to be really really honest because so much has changed now i mean they they can make like 3d models of a of a a liver or whatever it was, I can't remember what it was that they made a 3D of, and put it in somebody to help them live. Mm -hmm. It was a 3D model. Mm -hmm. it, they just printed it out. You can there's some of those things you can actually buy at the store that does that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just crazy. I saw this one video that I thought was the coolest thing ever. Okay. Uh, they it's a robotic arm. Looks like a real arm. Everything moves, you can move it, whatever, however you want. But right here is like a little glove apartment that you can put your cell phone, your wallet, whatever in. They even have one to where a spike will come out. Not me. Not you. <laughs> but a little, like a little, like, you can be literally a superhero. I mean, this is just stuff like that is just so freaking or cool that they can. <laughs> now, now you see what I deal with yeah. here, right? I'm here talking about qubits. We're discussing quantum theory and all this shit. He's looking for a MERS to be built into his artificial arm. I'm just and you know saying. he'll chop his arm off to get. No, it, right? I will not. I will not do that. I'm just no, saying. No, he'll chop his leg off to get. It. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's it's, it's a it's a it's a really awesome idea. I like the. It's an, it's an awesome idea. We might not have flying cars or hover boards to actually Which just hovers. Say? I got pockets in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and the very special episode goes right off the rails, boys and girls. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and record a couple more here. We'll tell you about this. We'll tell you who he is and everything here in this next episode. Till next time, I'm Spike. 
Chris. I'm Scott. That's Scott. We'll see you in the <laughs> next episode. <laughs> 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 <laughs>